Equipment is the most important thing in Rise of Kingdoms besides commanders. Equipment is basically what determines if your commanders are even powerful enough to be on the open field. With Zul Lang coming and Queen Ditto, I'm going to be going over all the equipment you should be using for archers. With the new leadership equipment on top of all of this chaos, I guess, you'll be looking into completely different sets from what used to be meta. My gear set here used to be the best archer set gear, by far and away. Now it's not even close. So today I'll be going over everything you need to know about archer gear, and what you should be getting and what you should be skipping, and I'll be going over gear for each stage of the game. Starting off really early game, in order of what you should be getting, your first thing will be just filling in all the slots. You don't care about the stat type, you don't have any alliance technology, and if you do it's very minor. You don't have any main technologies in your lab unlocked, plus the research lab or technology upgrades are fairly equal. You definitely don't have crystal technology, you don't have any altars, you don't have any ruins, so all of these things, they kind of play a role in what type of stats are important. But in the early game, attack is still just as good as health basically. So what I would be doing early game is just filling in your slots. Starting off, I would definitely be getting the chain mail, just filling in that chest plate slot. 3% attack, there's nothing special, super easy to get. Then I'll be getting the Helm of the Phoenix. Again, 4% defense, it's actually fairly good for a green piece. You get some damage to barbs as well, which is okay in the early game. After that, it's quite useless, but very nice piece for super early game. Then I would get yourself the Sturdy Boots. So the Sturdy Boots are another 2% defense. I didn't get them over the chain mail or the helmet. I feel they are less of a priority but they're still very powerful and they're just filling in that slot once again. Gloves, I'll be getting the leather gloves. They are the best gloves for the green tier. They are once again just filling in that slot. I would definitely be doing it. Then I'll be getting the Grooves of the Exile. This is an easy piece to get. It's blue, so I mean, can be a bit expensive for earlier game, but I recommend doing it as your fourth piece of equipment. Filling in that leg slot, you can consider the Ranger's trousers, but they're not as good with only 2% defense. They do have some damage to barbs, however, so if you really do need that, I guess you could do them and dismantle them later but I personally do recommend Grooves of the XL. And then the most expensive piece you can get here, and the last piece, ironically, is the Staff of the Lost. I'd be getting this last. I mean, it's still very powerful, definitely better than the Blessed Blade and these other two pieces who have no Archer stats. Getting the Staff of the Lost, you're going to be looking at 8% Archer Defense with a fairly high material cost for the early game, but the Blueprint's okay to get. In total, like I've shown before, you can see 5.5% Attack, 20% Defense, and 2.5% Health in total if nothing is talented. If you talent some things, stats will change, but I'm not going to talk about talents early game because, I mean, you're going to be replacing equipment quite quickly. After this, you'll be looking to upgrade specific types of equipment. So, first off, you're going to be keeping your Helmet of the Phoenix. It's still very good. You're going to be keeping the Staff of the Lost. It's still very good. You're still going to be keeping the Grooves of the Exile. They are still very good. First, the main upgrade you'll be doing is the chest plate. So, I'll be going from the Chainmail to the Commander's Heavy Armor. Very good upgrade here. You're getting 6% health. And you're getting towards that stage where you're getting a lot more alliance tech, which means a lot more attack. So I would be trying to drop off the attack pieces as often as I can, besides one exception. And then I would also be looking into your boots as your second most important upgrade. You can see here, I've got the flame treads put down. I think that if you can't get the flame treads, it's not the end of the world, but they are really, really, really good. And I would be getting them for every single player. They are great up until the end game. I wouldn't be getting sturdy boots though at this point, because I mean, they are gray pieces definitely get outclassed by other pieces. And now here's where I say health isn't as, as important. It's the leather gloves. I think 2.5% health over 4% attack isn't as powerful in the really early game because Alliance technology, yes, there's a fair amount of it, but you don't have a lot of it. So I recommend dropping that health and then going for the Saint Song, getting that extra attack. This is a bit of an expensive tier. It may take you about a month to get to this, but I mean, this is definitely going to last you quite a while. I would be using this, even if you have a, two marches and this is like your second set of equipment, this would be great for KVK1. I mean, it's going to trade quite well. A lot of stats on this. You're getting 4% attack, 18% defense, and 11.5% health. For KVK1, where health matters even more, it's not bad. Now it's you're looking to upgrade even more into that epic tier. Starting off, your weapon's actually still staying a Staff of the Lost. The other upgrade, the Golden Age, is quite expensive and is a bit later. Then I won't be changing the Commander's Heavy Chest Plate. I won't be changing the Greaves of the Exile. And I won't be changing those Flame Treads because they are just so powerful. I will, however, be upgrading your helmet to the Revival Helmet. Very powerful helmet here, certainly better than 4% defense from the Helm of the Phoenix. Plus, you're working towards that Revival set bonus. And that's why I also upgrade to the Revival Gauntlets. Cheapest of the upgrades, I guess, for the Revival set. And it's giving you more stats, basically. 0.5% more, but then again, you're also getting to that Revival set bonus with 3% more attack. So, in total, with the set bonus included and no talents, you're looking at 7.5% attack. 
21.5% defense, and 11.5% health. Now, if you can talent any pieces, I would get Commander's Heavy Armor as your first talent. So, like, if you're just buying those Blueprint Fragment Choice Chests every week from the VIP shop, you can just buy it, put them on the Heavy Commander's Armor. It's going to do fine. Extra health is always nice. It's also one of the last pieces I upgrade. And then you can try and talent also the stuff the lost since it is the weapon, it will get more stats from being talented. Now here's a gear set for about KVK1. Nothing in this set is talented. So one thing that's immediately obvious is I've added an accessory. It's the only time I'm adding an accessory on this tier list is to get the Call of the Loyal. Super easy to get, it's super cheap. You get it for free basically by just doing the Lost Canyon. Almost every player should be able to instantly buy it when they start a KVK. Besides maybe your first KVK, it'll take about a week. Call of the Loyal is great, just 5% march speed, base march speed, who can complain, I can't. Boots are not changing, they're staying as the flame treads. The helmet is not changing, and the gloves are not changing. So, they're all still very good, you're still sticking with all those set bonuses, that's fine. Weapon, I would, you know. So the first thing I would be changing is getting that weapon. Getting the epic weapon, the golden edge, doesn't give you another set bonus, but it's a lot of stats over this stuff of the lost. 13% archer defense is a lot of stats. Pretty negligible, these other stats here, like the cav attack and infantry defense. But getting the 5% more stats over stuff, the loss, definitely worth it in my opinion. Plus, you get to sit around with that extra health on your commander's heavy armor for a little bit longer. Then the final piece I recommend upgrading in this section, the KVK1-ish section, section, maybe like KVK2 if it's like a third march. And then I would go for the revival plate. You are losing health at the cost of attack, but you're gaining the set bonus here with a troop defense. So in the end, you finish off with 5.5% health. Which is, yes, less than 11.5%, but I mean, not the end of the world. 31% defense, which is really nice, and 15% attack, which is also really nice. So, this is the set I personally used in my KVK 1, like, towards the middle of it. Definitely a powerful set. I was destroying a lot of Richards. I was destroying a lot of Charles Martels. What can I say? I really enjoyed this set. I certainly recommend it for almost every player. Now is when you try and talent that purple gear. So, talenting the purple gear is going to be a little bit tough, and it's going to be, I guess, a bit more expensive for most players. But once you talent the purple gear, there are two things I do recommend skipping. So I would not be talenting the chest plate because as you can see, I've upgraded it. And I will not be talenting the weapon because as you can see, I've also upgraded that. What I would talent, certainly talent the helmet. Certainly would be talenting the gloves, the legs, and also 100% be talenting the flame treads. They are so good. I would just keep them forever. So talent those flame treads. Don't skip those. They should be your main priority for anything to talent. If you get like blueprint fragment choice chests, or if you've got like a choice in like an egg event to pick epic blueprints, switch it to the boots and get those blueprints for the flame treads. It's just such a good piece. Now, like I said, I'm upgrading from your revival chest plate. Your revival chest plate is 7.5% attack, but the dragon chest plate is 11% health. So I mean, getting 11% health over 7.5% attack is a lot better. At this point, health is an important stat. Most alliances will have max technology, or if not, they are very close to max technology. So getting that health is better than attack because now at this point, Attack is less valuable since Alliance Technology carries a lot of attack. It doesn't carry much defense, but a lot of attack. And I'd be getting the Dragon Breath Bow with that 20% defense, plus getting you that set bonus on the Dragon Breath set, giving you an extra 3% attack. So with your talented purple gear included, you're going to have 12% attack, 40% defense, and 20.5% health, which is really, really good. Now here's where it gets even more expensive, and a lot more gems have to be spent here to get you the blueprints you need. Weapon will be staying the same. I would not be changing the Dragon Breath Bow. Chest plate will be staying the same. Helmet will be staying as the revival helmet. The boots will also be staying the same. I really do like the flame treads until the end game. The first major upgrade, the one I would be saying you focus a lot on, is actually getting the chassis of the glorious goddess. Eight percent troop health, which is including archers, and two percent march speed is really really good. Much better than getting that attack or defense, sorry, on the revival grease, and certainly better than the attack on the legendary pieces. So getting that 8% troop health, I do recommend doing from the legendary leadership piece. And also it's going to help you walk, work towards another two-piece set bonus, which ties in with the next piece you'll be crafting, which is the Gauntlets of the Glorious Goddess. This gives you 6% troop defense, which is better than the 7.5% troop attack, and certainly better than 6% troop attack from Talented Gloves. So getting the Gauntlets of the Glorious Goddess, I do recommend for almost every player. A lot of base stats once you get the two-piece set bonus, and you're also getting Iconics with the legendary pieces as well. And most early game players will have enough iconic crystals to just iconic everything anyways. Now, once you've made that full, like, I guess, upgraded set of equipment now, you'll be looking at 3% attack, so almost no, no attack at all. It's only from the Dragon Breath set bonus. 39% defense, which is much higher than it's ever been for archers. Like, my full Dragon Breath set, let's just compare them right now. 
My full talented Dragon Breath set, including set bonuses, I don't think has 39% defense right now. 27.5% defense. If you include the set bonus, there's no defense in there. So 39% defense, you're basically swapping a bunch of attack for defense. Certainly recommend that. And then 28.5% health, stupidly good. You're getting a lot more health than you normally would. You can see my set's got 11%. If you include the set bonus, which doesn't actually count on the equipment attributes, you'll be 16% health. So you're getting 12.12% more health. Can't complain there. Definitely a better set than having a full. Now, what do I recommend for the next pieces of equipment? I'd recommend keeping everything the same. So weapon, chest plate, gloves, chassis, or the pants, and the boots, all the same. For accessories, I've made guides for every single archer commander, and I speak about their accessories in every video for each commander. Since every commander needs some type of different accessory in some way, depending on who they're paired with. So what I end up changing is getting a new helmet. I wouldn't be getting the legendary Dragon Breath helmet or the legendary Ancestral Mask. And I mean, the defense here is nice, but it's time to upgrade. And since you don't have a full set bonus for either the Dragon Breath or the Leadership Gears, and you've only got two or two on either, and you can't really get four unless you drop some pieces, it's get very complicated. I just go for the Pride of the Khan. 8% Ultra Health, it's great. I mean, you're going from 10% Defense to 8% Health. I would do that almost any day in the end game. This is a really end game piece of gear. So getting Pride of the Khan, certainly recommend it. If you can talent it, that's 10% or 10.5% Health. Also certainly recommend that. Definitely better than getting 11% Attack on the Dragon Breath Helmet. And probably better than getting that 15% Attack on the Ancestral Mask of the Night. Though you could consider this, I do think it's not as powerful as some other pieces of gear. In total, with the Pride of the Khan equipped, you get 31.5% defense, so you're losing 7.5% defense, but I mean, in the end, you're gaining more stats. You get 3% attack, and then you get 36.5% health. Stupid. Stupid amounts of health here. Basically, you're going to have a lot of health in the end game with archers, so this equipment is probably the best equipment you're going to go for. Now you know all the equipment for each stage of the game. If you enjoyed the video, all I ask is that you subscribe to the channel. We're pushing for a thousand subscribers. I'm hoping a thousand subscribers by June. My original goal is 500 by June. We've blown that out the water. If you enjoyed, I thank you for watching and I do hope to see you in the next one.